Hello everyone, welcome to BioWorks. So our topic for today is double fertilization in plants. Let's get started. So before starting with today's topic double fertilization, I would like to give you all a brief introduction to artificial hybridization. So what do you mean by artificial hybridization? It is a plant breeding program in which desired type of pollen grain can be used for the process of pollination and fertilization. And it is basically a program that is meant for crop improvement. All right. There are two important steps that is done in artificial hybridization. One is emasculation and the other is bagging and tagging. So I'm going to explain what these two mean. Emasculation simply means removal of anthers with the help of forceps. In this particular diagram, you can see how a forcep is used to remove the anthers. And usually the anthers are removed well before anthesis and well before dehiscence. As we all know, dehiscence is the stage where the pollen grains are released. So before the pollen grains are released, the anthers are to be removed from a bisexual flower. And why is this done? So that the flower only has the female part and self-pollination can be avoided. All right. Once emasculation is done, it is followed by bagging and tagging. So what happens in bagging is there is a polythene bag or a bag that is generally made up of butter paper is tied around the emasculated flower and it is prevented from self-fertilization. Also, unwanted pollen grains cannot come and reach into this flower. Hence, there is a bag that is used to prevent unwanted pollen grains from getting deposited. And there is a small tag that can be attached to this plant which has information about the date of emasculation or the date of pollination and so on. So this was a brief introduction to artificial hybridization. I will now explain double fertilization. So what is double fertilization? It is a unique property of angiosperms in which fusion of the male and female gametes takes place resulting in the formation of zygote followed by the formation of embryo. Now, before I come to the details of double fertilization, over here I have shown a diagram of how a pollen tube is formed and how does it carry the male gametes. So, as we all know, pollen grains are dropped on the stigma at the time of pollination and then there is a long tube that is formed which is called as pollen tube that passes through the style. Now, this pollen tube carries two male gametes and remember that both these male gametes are haploid. Now, the pollen tube enters inside the ovule through uh, an opening called as micropyle, right? So, when the pollen tube enters through the micropyle, the process is called as porogamy. I have shown it on my right hand side over here. So, porogamy is a process of the pollen tube entering through the micropyle. There is another term relevant which is called as chalazogamy. It is a process where the pollen tube enters through the chalaza and not the micropyle. Then in that case, it is called as chalazogamy. And if the pollen tube enters through the integuments, then we call it as mesogamy. So these three are the terms relevant to the process of double fertilization. But out of the three, porogamy is most common where the pollen tube enters in through the micropyle. Now, once the pollen tube enters through the micropyle, what happens is the contents of the pollen tube are released inside the embryo sac. And we all know that the pollen tube is guided inside the embryo sac with the help of the synergids, right? Synergids are present uh, near the egg cell in the embryo sac and they help in the passage of pollen tube inside. Now, what happens when the male gametes are released inside the embryo sac? There are two important events that take place during double fertilization once the male gametes are released inside the embryo sac. And those two important events are, the first one I'm going to write down here is syngamy, right? So syngamy is the fusion of a male gamete, a male gamete. Out of the two male gametes, one male gamete fuses with the X cell to form a zygote, right? Now, this male gamete, I'm talking about 
the male gamete that is present in the pollen tube. So, out of the two male gametes, one male gamete fuses with the X cell of the embryo sac to form a zygote. Talking about the ploidy of these, I am going to write that down here. Male gamete as we all know is haploid and X cell inside is also haploid and the formation of zygote, the ploidy of zygote will be diploid, right. The second important event that occurs after syngamy is triple fusion. Triple fusion and as the name suggests, it involves fusion of three nuclei. So, what happens in triple fusion is the second male gamete in the pollen tube fuses with the secondary nucleus as we all know secondary nucleus is present inside the embryo sac right so it fuses with the secondary nucleus to form a structure called as pen which stands for primary endosperm nucleus now talking about the ploidy of these cells male gamete is haploid of course it is going to fuse with secondary nucleus which is diploid as we all know polar nuclei consist of two nuclei right so, the PEN, what will be the ploidy level of PEN? Can you guys guess? Right, that will be 3N, which is triploid. Correct. Now, PEN later develops into something called as an endosperm. I am going to write that here, endosperm. Alright, so what is endosperm? Endosperm is a nutritive tissue. It supports the growth of embryo. And how, how is embryo formed? It is formed from the zygote. Zygote will later develop into the embryo. So, the growth of embryo will be supported by the endosperm. So, that was all about double fertilization. We call it double fertilization because there is fusion that takes place twice. One is syngamy and second is triple fusion. So, this concludes our topic for today. See you in the next session. Thanks for watching.